Hello everybody, Mike Tenney here at the Tenney School. We are here with Tenney vlog number 10 and today I am joined by our very own uh, Shauna Brayer who is the school registrar. Mm -hmm. And the topic that we were taking on today is the very confusing uh, Texas Foundations High School plan. And uh, Shauna is the, f the perfect person to have for this topic. She is definitely our site expert and all the ins and outs of of this graduation plan and we're gonna uh, kind of cover it in a way that we hope it'll make it more explainable to to folks out there in um, in Texas um, so for those of you who don't know let me just also mention that the Tenny vlogs are a series of videos that we're putting together to try to address topics of interest to parents and educators that are trying to help their kids achieve the next level of success academically and this is certainly a good topic to cover uh, in the way of backgrounds um, so I think we're just going to dive right in. If you like this topic, please uh, subscribe to our channel, share the video, comment. We'd love to hear from you. And if we missed anything, please let us know uh, what your take is on how this uh, graduation plan works. So to, uh, to start off, I want to do a little bit of a background on, OK, why are we talking about the, uh, the Foundation's high school plan now? And uh, Shauna, what would you say now is an important time to talk about this? Well, with House Bill 5, the new graduation requirement goes into full effect with this year's seniors. The class of 2018 and the classes beyond are going to have to be required to graduate on the new Foundations High School plan. And prior to this, they were able to opt into it mm -hmm. or stay on the previous three plans. Okay. And I would say that as a school, we probably have had 10% of our students opt into this plan. So most of the, the bulk of kids that have been graduating have been graduating on the old graduation plan. But starting with this senior class, everybody's going to be on the, the foundations plan. Right. They'll be required to be under the foundations high school plan. Okay. Um, second thing I'll kind of go over here. Uh, this graduation plan was established by the Texas legislature back in 2013. So a long time ago, it seems like. Um, and it was a long time ago. But really, the, the reason why we're talking about it now is because uh, they don't make it active until a freshman class enters. So that's why we're talking about it. Uh, for the 2018, that's the first class that has been under this grad plan for their entire high school uh, time. Um, now, Texas has changed their graduation requirements over the course of the years. Like this, I believe, is the, the fourth, fourth variation that I have seen of, of the graduation planning. Um, one of the, the big things that this plan did was uh, the state took a lot of grief for all of the end of course exams. Mm -hmm. And so along with this bill, they eliminated 10 of the end of course exams that, that, that they had had in the law prior to that. Uh, there used to be a requirement that star scores be part of a student's GPA. That was right. eliminated with this um, graduation plan. And, um, and really the big thing is this, it dramatically changed the way our uh, graduation plans look or the how we program them for them um, so did you want to cover a little bit of that so how did sure. it change the grad plans so um, first of all it's simplified by going from three plans to one prior to this you had three graduation plans you had the minimum for your academically struggling kids mm -hmm. you had the recommended plan that you know the majority of students would go into and then typically your stronger academic Excuse me. Uh, yeah, they had that distinguished achievement one, which was the right. The high the achievers. The high achievers yeah. would typically pursue the distinguished achievement plan. Okay, and I would say the bulk of the questions that we had come back from colleges were were on that recommended plan, or they were focused on that plan. Right. Um, so that was kind of the focal point, and now we've gone from three to one. Right. So now the new plan offers one single track that is flexible and customizable based on student interests and academic abilities. Okay. So it can still cater to those students that struggle academically. It can be the standard grad plan for your majority students and then your higher achieving students can go and strive for multiple endorsements and performance signal events that we can get to later. Okay. Yeah. And so that is that, that, so that kind of covers the background of why are we talking about this today and why is this uh, class of 2018 uh, graduation plan so different. Now we're going to kind of get into the, the plan. Now I, I would say that everybody that I've ever talked to about this, every parent that I've ever talked to that's been exposed to this, the first reaction is, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. 
-hmm. So it, <laughs> it's it very confusing. Be. And so what we've tried to do is try to come up with a, a relatively simple graphic that explains it. And we're going to show that here in a second. I would like to give a caveat and say there are a lot of details uh, that we are glossing over to, to put this graphic up here. So if you want to know, um, you know answers to really, really specific questions, you kind of have to get to a more complicated um, description. And I would also say that each district is allowed to come up with their own way that they satisfy these requirements. Right. So this is a district by district um, you know, grad plan program. So each district may do it a little bit differently. And I think that's what makes it so complicated is you have to, you know, make it work for your course listings and your school and what you offer. Right. And, and so quite there's all different kinds of options. Yeah. And quite frankly, at, for us as a school, with a, a very small school, we can't offer all the endorsements. Right. Because there's, we just don't have as many uh, course offerings as, as a big school district would. So uh, smaller schools are going to be more limited on how many endorsements they're going to offer. But let me go ahead and put this graphic up. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking through that. Um, so I'm going to talk first about the foundation. So it's called the Foundation Graduation uh, High School Plan. And really the foundation of that is a 22 credit graduation plan. So this is similar to what we had formerly with the minimum plan. Um, so students can graduate from high school with the with just 22 credits. It's not recommended, but that is the foundation that everything else is kind of built off on. Okay. So um, Shauna, you want to talk about this endorsement picture a little bit? Okay, so endorsements. What are endorsements? What also sets the foundation plan apart from those previous grad plans is a student's ability to earn endorsements based on their area of interest. So endorsement is basically a targeted area of study. Think of it like the high school version of a college major. By taking a coherent sequence of courses in one of the five endorsement areas, those five arrows you see, students will earn a diploma with an endorsement in that area. Now you have five endorsement areas. You have multidisciplinary, you have STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. You have your Arts and Humanities endorsement, Business and Industry, and then finally Public Service. There's five endorsements. Now with these endorsements, to earn an endorsement, you have to have 26 credits. So four more additional credits on top of that foundation 22. Mm -hmm. And also to earn an endorsement, you need Algebra 2 to be one of your credits. Okay. Now with that, with the foundation, adding four more credits to you could get an endorsement, completion of Algebra 2, the student earns a DLA or a distinguished level of achievement on their diploma as well, showing that they successfully completed the Foundations High School program, earned an endorsement, completed Algebra 2, and have 26 credits at least. Okay, so uh, the way I like to think about it and uh, part of what you've described there is, um, let's take the STEM endorsement. If you are graduating and you have earned your 22 credits, mm -hmm. um, kids that earn the STEM endorsement are generally going to take four additional credits and they're going to be focused on science, technology, engineering, and math. So that is, those four credits will satisfy the requirements to get that STEM endorsement. This is a simplification of the, um, the way it would work. And same kind of thing for arts and humanities. For a student that has taken a lot of arts and humanities courses, then they may earn that arts and humanities endorsement. Um, and that is what takes them to that 26 credits. I'd also note the multidisciplinary endorsement, schools are required to offer at least that one endorsement. Okay. And um, on our plan, if you're taking four core credits in your math, English, and science and history classes, and you complete algebra two, you are going to be on track to automatically earn that multidisciplinary endorsement. In fact, at Tenney School, I believe most of the students are going to automatically earn that multidisciplinary endorsement. But since credits can count for multiple endorsements, you don't need more credits to earn a second endorsement. They, they count for your Algebra 2 could count for your Foundations credit, but you could also apply that Algebra 2 credit on your STEM endorsement. Okay. So that potential for overlap gives you that flexibility and that customizable okay. plan. And I think uh, what you're alluding to there is you students could potentially earn uh, five endorsements if, right. if they took courses in every, every single area. The courses a student takes di dictates 
what endorsement they're going to get. But on that hand, since our students are probably going to have the multidisciplinary endorsement, if they're one of those high achieving students that's going to take their upper level physics and chemistry and pre-calculus, they're probably going to get a STEM endorsement as well. Sure. And an extra three, three years of language they might get. The arts, arts and, humanities. and humanities. So it doesn't take four credits to get each one of those endor endorsements. Students are going to graduate with, with more than one mm -hmm. endorsement. The main requirement for any endorsement is to have at least 26 credits, one of them being Algebra 2, and then whatever coherent sequence of classes for that endorsement plan. Okay. And I think that the, once I understood this plan, I think what I would say is uh, I think parent, parents can rest easy in knowing that you could you could go to school just like you did before this was in, in place and earn these endorsements. Right. So it, you're not necessarily changing the classes you're programming your kids to take. They're just naturally going to pick up these endorsements by taking a normal, challenging high school course or a course load. Uh, last thing I want to mention, up here in the red block we have this performance acknowledgement piece. Um, so can you describe that a little bit? Sure, let me just try to give you like a, a quick summary. So those students that want to, high, high achieving students want to go and pursue more competitive places and um, have the best transcript they can, right? And they're taking AP courses or they're getting significantly higher scores on their ACT and PSAT. There's certain um, pieces that can, or, or, uh, earn them performance acknowledgements. Okay. Uh, for example, if you took an AP test and you score a three or higher, okay. you can earn a performance acknowledgement on your diploma or transcript. Okay. Uh, a certain high score on a PSAT, an SAT, or an okay. ACT is going to earn you a performance acknowledgement. And at the public school level, I believe um, a star, there's a star test, okay. high score equivalent to earning a performance acknowledgement. Okay. And that's how we talked about how you can still customize this and you don't need that distinguished plan, the prior grad plan, okay. you can customize the new foundations high school plan to show everything you've done, everything you've strived for on your high school career. Okay. So in summary, we have our three different kind of levels that we focused on here. Every kid is going to graduate in Texas from now on, and they're going to have to have had at least the foundation, which is 22 credits. Correct. Kids that have taken four additional credits and have done some specializing in certain areas of specialty, to use the same word twice, they will also earn endorsements. Correct. Um, which will then take them up to that 26 credits in our distinguished level of achievement. Students that are uh, well above average and are taking AP classes or may have done exceptionally well on the PSAT or the SAT or the ACT, uh, they may gain uh, performance acknowledgements as well. So that's the overall summary of the foundations plan in a nutshell. And again, very high level version here. Um, there's so many details with the plan that uh, you have to read. If you, if you want to know real detailed questions, you need to read into your specific district and what they have to say about that. Um, so the final thing that we wanted to cover a little bit was, okay, will, co will colleges care? Do, do they care about um, the endorsements that your child has, basically? Um, so the way we broke this down was, um, I, I would say, my, my personal opinion, and uh, by the way, Shauna does a lot of the transcript piece. Another college counselor does works more with the colleges, so I, I'll kind of represent a little bit of what I've heard from her, uh, from Lisa. Um, in general, I think I would say that colleges are going to believe that your courses and your grades are going to be more important than the endorsement stamp that you have on the bottom of your diploma. And, and there's a couple of exceptions to that or a couple of reasons for that. But um, by and large, if you took challenging classes and you got good grades, that's going to mean more to a college than if you have a multidisciplinary endorsement at the bottom of your diploma. It's still about courses and grades. It's not necessarily about that stamp. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, um, so you had a point about um, the area of specialty. Um, and if you are taking challenging science, technology, engineering, and math classes, you're naturally, naturally. going to earn that STEM endorsement. Right. And we were talking earlier about? Um, about out-of-state. 
Okay. The Texas schools, of course, are going to care about it. But what if an out-of-state school is looking at that transcript? What are those endorsements going to mean? Well, I think they're going to show that there's official documentation that this student was dedicated in that endorsement area. So, right. for example, you've got this great transcript, high grades, you've taken all the right courses, and down at the bottom they see that trigger word STEM, or they see arts and humanities. It'll show that that student was dedicated, and uh, maybe that's their perspective major. Right. They went above and beyond. Sure. It's going to make them look more competitive. I think one thing that would be interesting to see over time, and, and again, we don't know because we haven't graduated a class under this and we don't exactly know how the colleges and universities are going to look at this, but um, Texas state schools are going to care. Mm -hmm. They have to care because they also fall underneath the Texas state legislature. Um, as opposed to private schools and out-of-state schools that don't follow fall under uh, our legislature, they they are free to care or not to care about the endorsement. Um, but the Texas state schools are going to have to pay attention, like they did with the previous plan. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see if maybe you do see uh, Texas A&M say, well, you can't get into the College of Engineering unless you have a STEM endorsement. Right. So I think you could see some of those things down the line that uh, universities or colleges will, uh, within universities will pick up on certain endorsements and say, well, this is required. You have to have earned that endorsement in order f to get right into certain colleges. We'll probably see a lot of those things at the end of this year being that it's the first year required to have foundation high school plan and the potential to earn endorsements. Yeah, and I think they're they're gonna they're gonna get their first batch really in the next semester, and so how the colleges are gonna react to that is gonna be a little bit of a wait and see game, but um, I think for the most part my message would be don't worry so much about the endorsements. If you if you've taken challenging classes and you've gotten good grades, that's the most important thing. And you're going to get the endorsements anyway. because They'll naturally come when you pick those courses. That are challenging, mm -hmm. yes. And you excel at them and you get the high grades. Yes. All right. So I think we've about covered it. Is there anything on your notes that we didn't get to? No, I think we got, we got it all pretty much summed up. Okay. Uh, so I hope this was beneficial to you out there. Um, I, I mentioned that we've, I've come across many parents that are very confused by this the first time they see it. Hopefully this has helped you kind of crystallize down what does it really mean, this Texas Foundation's high school plan. Um, and again, if you found this information interesting or helpful, we'd love for you to comment, share, like, um, any of those types of things. And as we build up towards the school year, we are going to have some more vlogs that we're going to put out. We kind of took a break for our summers off, and uh, this is the first of, of some more that are going to come out. So we look forward to seeing you guys in the near future. See you around. Bye.